the opening hands? I think you nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> I did my bestest. Hmm. This is an interesting hand here from David Inglis. Not loving the lack of green. Yeah, this hand is is pretty strong on the draw if you hit the green. And if you don't hit the green, it's pretty much a train wreck. So overall, a pretty tough keep here. But once again, you're on the draw, so you do have that chance to hit the green. But even the double Jaspera Sentinel is not very good. So I, I would think this is a close mulligan. But Jan yeah. has a great hand. Yeah, that hand is looking super good. Just being able to get the Acroan War out early if you want to. Multiple spells earlier on. It's going to be a very tough ask here for David Inglis. And I want to point out the one card in Jan Merkel's hand. The, the one of a Acroan War is so mm -hmm. good in these adventure mirror matches at just breaking up a board stall. And really, Jan Moritz Merkel, that's the game that he's trying to play. He wants board stalls. David Inglis? does not, wants to stamp, stampede over the competition and not really get these gummed up board states because that is advantage Jan Merkel. Can I just say, I love this hand. This yes, hand this hand's is good. phenomenal. Turn one Sentinel into Magda, into Edgewell Innkeeper, and then you got Bone Crushers if you want. Oh my goodness. Mm. Yeah, this hand, this hand is the dream. And you you know, if you're David here, you're just like, ah, uh, no, thank you. I would not like to put one of these cards back. They all are perfect. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it has to be Bone Crusher. But that's pretty brutal because that is a great hand or a great card in this matchup. It is indeed. He will have the one Bone Crusher Giant to deal with the Tangled Florahedron if that's the first target that he wants to go after. But uh, also just having, oh, lovely draw. Just having Edgewell Innkeeper being able to refill the hand with these adventure creatures is so powerful that both players are playing this adventure package. Yep, absolutely. And we don't really see a clean answer from Jan Merkel up there for any of the Edgewell Innkeepers or really any creatures um, except until we get to the Crone War phase. So yeah, that, that in Ooh, it, Edgewell lovely. Innkeeper is going to be great. David has had two great draws. Den of the Bugbear, you want to play that on turn two. Otherwise, it's an annoying tap land that just irritates you when you can't get your yes. freaking things down. Would you That's say it would bug you? That's one thing I don't you? like about the land. Yes, it's a very oh. bug. It's it's very bug. Much annoy. <laughs> Much annoy. Yes. Bone Crusher Giants going to uh, stomp away the Tangled Florahedron, courtesy of Jasper Sentinel and Magda's ability to make treasures. And the Tangled Florahedron wasn't the biggest deal here, but we were going to have a nice line of Heart's Desire plus Lovestruck Beast, but it also really shut down the possibility to go Showdown of the Scald, and I think that is worth playing around um, from David. Yeah. Another land here off the top. So there's the potential to go Innkeeper Bone Crusher Giants. Yeah, it looks like we can go Innkeeper, Bone Crusher Giant, or even Innkeeper, Heart's Desire, Lovestruck Beast, and use the treasure. Mm -hmm. We'll see if there is a little bit more value on keeping that treasure around and just going with Bone Crusher. Both plays are pretty good. Or, yeah, yep. not even Heart's Desiring. It's, it's kind of like a, a resource management conundrum with these Magda yes. decks, because... Magda has a really powerful ability when you've got five treasures on the battlefield. So mm -hmm. you kind of want to keep them going, but at the same time, you want to get your board nice and big and chunky to deal with whatever shenanigans are coming from the other side in these creature matchups. Exactly. There's so many things to be thinking about in these adventure mirrors, essentially. Just you have to be worried about a Crow and War, so you don't want to play something too big. You have to yeah. be worried about Embercleave coming from the Gruul side. You have to be worried about a lot of card advantage coming with Showdown, Giant Killer. It's just really, really challenging to be able to play around all of these things. Yeah, and especially in this matchup, I quite like it when off the board you're able to take out some of these bigger targets for the Crow and Wars and just get as wide as you possibly can, because if an Akron War takes an itty bitty little critter, you're not too sad about that, right? But now we're gonna see yeah. potentially Jan Merkel take the Bone Crusher Giant, excuse me, take the Lovestruck Beast and just be able to start swinging in with his. Yep, here's the big decision here. Do you further progress your board and get another 5-5 five five into play and go Heart's Desire and Lovestruck Beast? Or do you just a Crow and War, take Lovestruck Beast, realize that in a couple of turns, David's going to have to make a pretty bad attack with all of his creatures and then going to lose them all to Chapter 3 of the Crow and War? It, it's a tough decision here. I think I like a Crow and War as well, but it's very close. Because now you're tempted to not attack since... Mm. Or I guess, yeah, you're going to attack because you're going to take the Love Struck Beast, excuse oh, yeah. me. Yeah, so if you want to, you put your Edgewell Innkeeper in the way, and we know that that's generally not going to happen. Also a consideration maybe to take the Edgewell Innkeeper. 
and Ooh. then get cards off of the love struck beast. So and they're all quite nifty and not playing that uh, heart's desire from David Inglis. I mean, might come back to bite him. I'm not sure though. Yeah, we'll see here. Not able to attack with Lovestruck Beast. Not the biggest deal as well. And now we're in the really rough spot for David. It is just, you don't really want to play anything into this battlefield just because it is going to have to attack next turn and then it's mm -hmm. going to be dealt with by Chapter 3 of the Akroan War. So it feels bad, but we're probably just going to see a, maybe play Jaspera Sentinel since it doesn't uh, die to Chapter 3 of the Akroan War and then pass the turn. Which is not ideal. Mm -mm. Yeah, Crow and War really uh, throws a wrench in the works here for David Inglis, for both players actually. Depending on who has one going, it even gets more complicated if there's several going at the same time. But uh, here's to see what he decides to do here. Yeah, unfortunately, they have the same artwork, love struck beasts and stuff. So if we get multiple of Crow and Wars going, you know, we're we're gonna need someone talking in our ear to tell which one's which. Just tie a balloon <laughs> to one, then you'll figure out which one's which. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, a really tough spot here. At least Jaspera Sentinel will be able to tap some of these creatures so they don't have to attack right into love struck beast. But that only solves the problem for one of the turns since they'll still lose to or they'll still die to chapter three of the Akronor. Yeah. Here comes Jaspera Sentinel. Land drop for turn. And as you said, Corey, just going to pass the turn because uh, there's some bad attacks coming next turn. Yeah, I think what David is trying to set up here is, let's say, an end step tap Magda to get another treasure mm -hmm. and then tap both creatures and try to just do Shatter Skull Smashing for six and deal with two big creatures. And I think after this turn, it's pretty likely that we're going to see two giant Lovestruck Beasts. So it's going to be a nice target for this Shatter Skull Smashing. But well, we'll see if that's enough to keep David into this game. And also with the play of the second Jaspera Sentinel, nothing is going to be attacking next turn from David's side. So that innkeeper exactly. should come back to David unless there yes. was a way to tap it down. Yeah, no, that that is a great point right there. There's not going to be a forced attack. And, uh, and we, it doesn't look like we have Jaspera Sentinel or anything. Maybe we can play Lovestruck Beast into a Jaspera Sentinel. That would probably be the best draw here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, as it stands, it's going to come back. And then that Bone Crusher Giant is going to be an actually nice play where it's been kind of turned off because of the Akron yep. War for a couple of turns. Yeah, that'll be able to get another card and get back in uh, get back in this race in terms of hand size. So let's see if there is a block tendered here. No threat of an Ember Cleave or anything like that. It would just be five damage to face. So a block is pretty risky here because if we block, we can't tap down both creatures okay now this edge wall innkeeper might actually be blocked or this innkeeper might actually have yeah. the ability to block mm, i'm not sure if i love that yeah i don't sure not taking not there. taking five we'll is, is cool but maybe the trade would have been better there yeah or just a no block that's what i was kind of thinking yeah all right, what is the draw? It's a Crag Crown Pathway, so no ability to tap the Edgewell Innkeeper, but at this rate, it should be fine, because, uh, I mean, Love yeah, Sharpies can't attack, Yeah, though, so exactly. That's, this that's, is fine, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is fine. Just gonna Minor be able detail, to tap Magda one down. One. Yeah, just tap Magda down here, do this giant Shatter Skull smashing. Get run one, two. Yeah, it looks like we have exactly six. Seems kind of like a home run play here. Nice. Oh, this oh, is going to be brutal. Going for the one ones. Oh, okay. Keeping those treasures, huh? Yeah, it's, it's getting close to either Goldspan Dragon or Ember Cleave, so really putting a high equity on these treasures. But we are going to lose Magda here. Mm -hmm. So the treasure game is kind of going to stop. Bye bye, Magda. Rest in peace. <laughs> Angled Florahedron is a very nice find, though. I, I kind of wish he'd killed the Lovestruck Beasts, but here we are. And here yeah. are the 5-5s. Five and things are going to start hurting quite soon. 
Yeah, we look at this board state if we decide to just cash in all our treasures. These two love struck beasts are gone, and we got two one ones. We still have Bone Crusher Giant uh, to be able to block this other love struck beast. So as it stands, David's is still in a very good position, <laughs> but you wonder if that would have been a better uh, position here because we do have a third 5-5 five five coming down, and that's the Big Bad Elk. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. you know who wants to be a Big Bad Elk? The yeah. Elky. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. But here is the huge payoff from David for not making that play of Shatter Skull Smashing. All of a sudden, we can just cast Tybalt. Yes, that's true. David's too good. Too I good. Mean, that's that's also super tempting, but I want to see Velki. Please. <laughs> you want to see Velki and a, a Gigantha? Oh, man. <laughs> Not me. Give me Tybalt here. We can even do a nice little play of exiling Lovestruck Beast. And uh, yeah, I guess I guess just that. But there's not really any great attackers that would be able to take down Velky. It might be a little safer just to tick up and do some chump blocking. We'll see what David does here. Cashing in those treasures. Here comes Tybalt, the cosmic imposter. He's going to get to exiling some stuff. Finds two lands. So Lair the Hydra is a nice find there. I think that may have been Jan Merkel's. Not oh. bad. And here are the games where Tybalt is really poised to just take over the game. Just because there's no real way to deal with these Planeswalkers, there's no cards like Ember Cleave in Jan uh -huh. Merkel's deck to be able to go over the top. You just have to attack that powerful Planeswalker and at seven loyalty with going up two each time, as long as he doesn't just, you know, let this Lovestruck Beast hit it. <laughs> <laughs> this Tybalt's going to be around for a while. Yeah. And it's nice that we actually get to see why this team included Valky yeah. in their list. You know, because for creature-heavy matchups, like you mentioned, they don't have much of a way to deal with it. Yeah, so far I haven't really seen the Planeswalker dominate a game um, when, at least when we've seen it on coverage, you know, I've been talking with the team of David Inglis um, and Arne Hushenbeth and company, and they've put in their chat that they have had games where it's been insane, but we haven't personally seen it too often, but this is a game where we're very poised to have a dominant per performance from this Planeswalker. All right, well, it's going to have some work to do here. Do we plus see what's on top of the libraries, or is Gigantha a big enough threat to deal with? Gonna get rid of the love struck beast there. Gigantha's gonna keep hanging out. And uh just get our own love struck beast, you know? Seems good. Yeah. Jan Merkel top decking that bone crusher giant was actually insane, though. It, it doesn't seem like it was really, really good, but dealing with that edge wall innkeeper here before it was gonna draw an extra two cards, that was how David was gonna completely pull ahead. Uh -huh. Already is ahead, but really would have uh kind of shut the door on this game. Yeah. Now Jan Merkel is really looking for a showdown, that that premier card to be able to get back into this game. That's one way to attack down Tybalt is when combat gets really messy, where there's plus one, plus one counters that can kind of be thrown on anything. <laughs> the value! Just look at that turn. Being hmm. able to cost Heart's Desire and the Lovestruck Beast here. This Lovestruck Beast is a traitor. I would just like to point that out. Yes, yes, absolutely. Interesting to tap the Bone Crusher Giant there instead of the 1-1. One, one. That kind of screams to me that you want to just chump block mm -hmm. instead of block with the Love Struck Beast. I think David's plan now has gone from, I'm going to beat the living daylights out of you, to, no, I'm going to win with my Planeswalker. Oh. And uh, there's a concession, at least wow. the threatening of concession there from Jan Merkel. Doesn't have a way to, way to deal with that. Can't get through the wall of creatures. And we're going to go to game number two. Yeah, and just the writings on the wall, you know, kind of what we were talking about here, Ailey, is there's no real clean way to deal with that Planeswalker. And Jan's just like, you know what, I'll, I'll save a little time. I'll try to win the next two games in a, in a quicker fashion. <laughs> Let's take a look at the sideboarding decisions here. Dranith Magistrate's coming in. Or Jan Merkel able to shut off the adventure shenanigans. A couple of burning hands, red cap melees, and taken out lead spellbinder and a couple of the mana dorks. Yep. On the other side of things, we got a bunch of red stuff coming in and coming out. So green stuff gets to stay exactly where it is. Yeah, taking out Goldspan Dragon, and that is just really a concession to four giant killers. There's not a mm -hmm. ton of giants, in quotation, in <laughs> David's deck, but those Goldspan Dragons 
are the number one hit, and it's just a little bit too much of a liability to be stuck yeah. in your hand. And look at that hand from David. That's a nice one, as well as Jan Merkel. It's going to yeah. be a battle. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a good one. So uh, get comfy, friends. Or, I don't know, it might be over really quick, but let's hope <laughs> not. I want to see a good old scrap between these two players who are fighting for their lives in this Challenger Gauntlet, both kicking things off with Heart's Desire. And uh, Burning Hands and Fire Prophecy will be able to take care of any follow-up threats here from David Inglis. Yeah, absolutely. This this match is really everything for these players. Their back is up against the wall. This is the last of the Eliminator match. Loser goes home. Winner fights for that world championship spot next round. Just a little game of cat and mouse here between these two one ones. It's like, you want to block? No. Yes. Maybe. There we go. All right. One one's dealt with. Cool. Yeah, Jan Merkel's deck is really designed to just anytime there's a trade available, yeah, Jan, Sam, Logan, they've all just been snapping it off. They're like, oh, yeah, absolutely trade. A resource <laughs> light game favors them very heavily with cards like Showdown. <laughs> So no Magda this turn. Both players dancing around the removal that they know they will have brought in. And uh, here comes big ol' Lovestruck Beast, unfortunately. It's gonna get burning hands did. Yep, throwing these hands at that Lovestruck Beast. And that used to be the one creature that was kind of safe, right? Mm -hmm. Like a 5-5 was so hard to deal with. But with the inclusion of Adventures in the Forgotten Realm, Burning Hands is one of the premier sideboard removal spells yeah. in this format. And, you know, really any format. Yeah, it's super neat to see some of these removal cards making their ways into uh, the metagame. Absolutely. Even taking down Primeval Titans and Moderns. This, <laughs> this card is really <laughs> a, a fantastic removal spell. Nice. You'll love to hear it. <laughs> oh, man, I'll be so tempted to Velky this turn. Just take a squiz in the hand. And you'd be right, and it's going to whiff. It just sees a bunch of removal spells, so you have a two-mana two-one. Nice. Eh, it's not the worst, right? Okay. And there's the oh, creatures. you little sneaky innkeeper hiding out <laughs> in the kitchen, weren't you? Yeah, the innkeeper there would have, or getting oh. the innkeeper on the turn before would have been pretty sweet. Just turning this Valky into innkeeper and then next turn going innkeeper into Lovestruck Beast, draw two cards. That would have been kind of disgusting. That would have been real gross. Speaking of but disgusting. But you know what else is gross? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you and I are on the same page there. That yeah. showdown of the skulls is icky. Oh, I was talking the Cadillac too. That was a great draw from David. Decisions, decisions. Showdown of the Skulls will start making things chunky. That's yep. exactly what is available, at least in terms of the Exile Zone over there. Yeah, and all seven out of eight of those cards are known information to David. So you get to really pick, be like, okay, what is the best way to play around these cards? And Ooh. I think the best way to play around it is Azika's Chariot. So a nice play there by David. A nice draw from Jan. Oh, you have a chariot? Cool, me too. Where'd you get yours from? You know, we'll start comparing model type and whatnot. There you go. Yeah, another big pickup there. I imagine we're going to for sure see a land from the Adventure Zone uh, being either the Tangled Veil or the Mountain. And it's kind of brutal because you really want to cast the cards that are on the Adventure, but they're not particularly great in this situation. I mean, especially Red Cap Melee. Without having a red mm. creature, you don't want to cast that one. Fire Prophecy on one of the cats is okay, but there's still another cat to be cloned. We'll we'll see what Jan does here. There's a ton of options available. Yeah, it's a little awkward to see without second green because you could go Edgewell Innkeeper into Eska's Chariot or the inverse to put a counter on one of the cats. So, yep, and that's another thing you have to keep. You have to be really conscious of here. And I mean, with could just that. Could just kill both cats. Okay, this is definitely not casting a Zika's Chariot here, so trying to get value off double fire prophecy, it looks like. Yeah. I don't hate it. Yep. Seems good. Whee! Smork. And the nice thing about this is we're, we're probably going to see Jan Moritz Merkel here casting both fire prophecies during his turn to play around a possible stomp on this Edgewall Innkeeper. Mm hmm. Little does he know that there's burning hands waiting in the wings. <laughs> yes, exactly. And a pretty good target for burning hands when Edgewall Innkeeper gets to a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. All right, so both kitty cats are going to become uh, 
Nice and crispy. As Fire Prophecy takes care of them, will we see another card sent to the library? We will not. So that's a really, really nice hand there for Merkel for the next turn yeah. of Shadow of the Skull's triggers. Yeah, we're going to lose these two cards here, but what's left in Jan Merkel's hand is some of the best cards in these matchups here. We do have the Edgewall Innkeeper and Lovestruck Beast as an excellent play to kind of get the ball rolling again here, but so far you got to like Jan Merkel's uh, state of the game here with having some really powerful plays next turn. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit of a risk if David Inglis lets this Edgewall Innkeeper stick around. Especially with the you know the potential for card draw coming out of the adventure creatures, too many counters getting it out of burning hands range. I don't know if he could do that, but you know you got to be thinking about that too. The one thing you got we got to be looking at here is just what a great play Jan Merkel made next turn, just in case there's a possible bone crusher. And well, just hey. as you think about it, it pops to the top of the library here, and that is a a, a great card to play around because now you you don't get that easy stop target. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're going to go for Magda Brazen Borrower. This will be able to crew up the cat, make a treasure. So that's very and nice indeed. And copy the treasure. Exactly. Here we're going to get a, a little bit of the chariot showing its versatility here, being able to copy all these tokens, but also copy a treasure to make four mana for, let's say, Edgewall Innkeeper and Lovestruck Beast, if that is the plan. Looks like Burning Hands is going to take care of this Edgewall Innkeeper, preventing any additional card draw off adventure nonsense. Passes the turn back, leaving up a stomp. Oh, Ugh, it's a Dranath Magistrate. It we saw Dranath Magistrate be the absolute hoser to Logan Nettles in the last round, and it just shows how how good that card is when you can't deal with it. Stomp doesn't deal with it. Burning Hands doesn't deal with it. Red Cap Melee does, but at the price of a land, it's a very tricky <laughs> card to deal with. Yeah, and now David Inglis seeing this is not going to want to fire off that Bone Crusher Giant because that would be the only thing that could trigger the Edgewall Innkeeper. Mm -hmm. The stump side of things, that is. And now, of course, you know, we didn't know that... Uh, uh, we didn't know that uh, the Dranath Magistrate was going to be coming down next turn, and David Inglis even was able to see the hand multiple times throughout this stage of the game and didn't see it there, so didn't play around it. But last turn, mm -hmm. Edgewall Innkeeper into Lovestruck Beast was a play we could have made and something David might uh, go to regret uh, at the end of this game. Oh, we'll just steal it. Just steal Hello. it. It's totally fine. That was oh, insane. Oh, what a good draw. Now it's going to shut down the Lovestruck Beast from Jan Merkel and allow <laughs> David to be able to play Lovestruck Beast next turn before you have to give back to the Dranath Magistrate. That was insane. Oh my goodness. You couldn't have asked for a better top deck in the Akroan War. How do we deal with this pesky creature? Well, we just steal it, Corey. That's all you got to do. Absolutely. I, I almost assuredly we're going to see that. And then the real question is, are we going to see a Zika's Chariot be crewed up when we have that Burning Hands that I'm pretty sure we actually know about? I don't see the red dot up there, but I think that was a card that was in the hand really early when Velky took a peek. So it, it's going to be a, a tough dynamic of what, what we want to do with the Chariot as well. But it's hard to say not playing this Akroan War this turn. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's jam it. Let's go. Crone War, coming for that Dranath Magistrate. Gimme, 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 gimme. Two red mana up is going to uh, look a little sus for <laughs> David, so may not swing in here with a chariot. Just Valky God of Lies, chipping in for some damage. The one one could jump in the way and get rid of it. That's a fine, fair trade. Yep, absolutely. Great play here by David, being able to play around that burning hand. And really the main thing is trying to make it so Jan Moritz Merkel doesn't use his mana efficiently at every turn. And there was a yeah. not a good burning hands target there. That land six was actually pretty good. So you can play this chariot and burning hands. Mm -hmm. And now we'll see if David wants to crew at end step, which you normally want to do, but that does open the door to this burning hands. Hmm. I think he I think he knows it's there. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have the circle on it though, so he might know, you know, in his brain, but doesn't know for sure. Don't risk it, man. This would be a great no crew. I'm uh this would be an excellent high level play here from David. 
And even if you do crew it, it's not the absolute end of the world because then, well, your Edgewell Innkeeper and your Lovestruck Beast, they're safe from burning hand. So mm -hmm. I could see this one going either way. Very difficult decision here for David Inglis. He's going to just pass it back and he finds a spare kitty car. My goodness me, the draws just keep coming for him. Big draw here. And one play that we might see come up here is when Chapter 3 of the Akroan War comes around, having that Azika's Chariot around uh -huh. to be able to tap Dranath Magistrate. Dranath Magistrate won't kill itself because it is a 2-4, but with the help of a friendly Bone Crusher Giant, you can stop <laughs> that last two targets to deal with it. And uh, you got to put a high equity on that because it is oh, yes. such a impactful card so we might see that next turn and we already see that stop on david's upkeep here uh, he knows what's <laughs> up he does indeed shadow skull smashing another excellent draw against these go wise strategies so things are looking super good here for david yeah david has played this game incredibly i would imagine we don't see a chariot crew because it does risk that line where where you're not um able to uh, have Dranath Magistrate deal two damage to it, so a really nice no crew, and we'll see uh, what Jan Merkel can do to answer this. It's not it. Playing such a reactive, or he's being forced to play such a reactive game at this point with the Crow and War going off. Not being able to play his Lovestruck Beast, courtesy of his own Dranath Magistrate, the traitor. <laughs> Yeah, Jan Moritz Merkel is living by the Magistrate and dying by the Magistrate here, it looks like. I mean, do you even worry about the kitty cats? I think I don't want to attack or I don't want to crew the chariot to be able to block, but it looks like the love struck beast is a pretty free block yeah. outside of that. It's interesting. I think Dranath magistrate is completely fr fine as well because you're just like, okay, if you want to use a stomp to finish that off, now you get to play some of these adventure creatures. So that's the risk on this turn, but it's also meaning you're spending a removal spell at your own creature again. So <laughs> I, I like this block by David. I think it was very good. And now with no other play barring the burning hands, we're going to see Gigantha come to hand for next turn. Will there be a next turn, though, at this rate? Yeah, it's going to be a little tough to actually just finish the game, but we'll see if uh, we're going to see that play. Oh, oh, no, this could this could be kind of rough. Backfire. Yeah, this could backfire. But it does give him the ability to stomp as well, so... It's not the worst if the chariot does get burning hands here because the stomp is available to take care of the Dranath Magistrate. That's a good point to just stomp it right now. Yeah. It's not great, but with the second Essica's chariot in hand, you don't hate to do it either. Doesn't go for it. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. And this accomplishes the same thing as lining up that play for next turn, except you get to be somewhat mana efficient. You do lose both mm -hmm. of your treasures, so that's a little a little awkward. But right now, David is just tempting Jan Moritz Merkel to say, yeah, kill this chariot. I got another one for you. <laughs> more kittens. More. <laughs> oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, without the cats, this isn't as valuable. Well, we uh, we are going to see spare cats being uh, deployed potentially. Yeah, and it's interesting. Do you care about um, do you care about putting out another Cadillac, or do you want this Azika's chariot to be dealt with first? That's kind of the choice here. And by killing that Edgewall Innkeeper, Jan Merkel is just saying, I can't really win if you attack with that Lovestruck Beast. <laughs> and as it stands, there's not another 1-1, one, one, but you really mm. are living on borrowed time by doing that because eventually you're going to find a 1-1 one, one, and eventually you're going to be able to attack with this powerful creature. I mean, personally, I'm still keen on cats. So if you dump the other Essica's Chariot, get rid of the new one, crew the cats or even the Lovestruck Beast and then just start making a, a board that's too wide for Jan to deal with. Yeah, and right now, David is really slowing down, recognizes what an advantageous uh, situation he's in right now, which could force him into a qualifier match. So this this has to be the biggest moment 
of his magic career. Yep. So just going to see the attack here with Magda and the Essica's Chariot. No token to copy, though. Yep, it works in such a way that you have to have something to copy while you attack, so this treasure mm -hmm. will not be able to be cloned. And we saw Arne Hushenbeth realize that yesterday when he tried to do a similar thing. And big draw step on Jan Merkel here. Ah! We do have two 5-5s five that can come down. So this is pretty big for this turn. But outside of this, Jan Merkel is really going to be looking for something like Showdown of the Scald to, to get back into an advan uh, advantageous place. Mm -hmm. As a Bone Crusher Giants. So this low struck beast isn't doing diddly squat right now. We could see a crew and a stomp to finish off one of these five fives. Would get through for two at the very least, or even the follow up play of a shadow skull smashing on both creatures mm -hmm. if they block the biggest ones. Yeah, the love struck beast is likely just going to be a driver here for the Azika's chariot. That's going to be the the most useful thing here. But shadow skull smashing, if we can get up to six x equals six, you'd kill both creatures anyways. Um, but if we attack with, let's say, a Chariot and a Bone Crusher Giant, you're able to um, just stomp down the creature. So we still mm -hmm. have some pretty decent attacks because of that. Or let's say if you block both Bone Crusher Giant and Azika's Chariot with the two 5-5s, five then you just have Shatter Skull smashing for two yep. and just ping one to each, and then it, it serves a very good purpose. So and that's everything's going right for David. Very much so. I mean, Jan Merkel has nothing in hand. He has to try and survive somehow against this onslaught even though he's dealt with a love struck beast it's <laughs> it's gonna jump in the car and just ride him over yep absolutely and we're seeing this final rope here david has to make a decision that's the one thing you don't want to happen is skipping through your turn mm -mm. it'll be bad news bears indeed as uh it's time to start swinging Corey. yep time to start swinging there's no ember cleave though on david's side which is the train wreck situation for Jan. And Jan knows, yeah, I just can't block in such a way that I, you know, play around Embercleave. Embercleave just wins the game. So yeah. we're going to see Jan just make blocks uh, that would make sense. And these both make sense, but it's going to play right into Shatter Skull Smashing here or Stomp, de depending on what David decides here. And then all of a sudden, Jan Merkel is left with just an Ezekiel's Chariot with nothing to crew it up. Exactly right. So Shadow Skull Smashing would clear out both of these massive creatures on the other side of the board. And it looks like that's what we're going for. Casual four mana to deal with ten power. You'll love to see it. Okay, there it is. Both creatures falling. This is going to be a gigantic draw step for Jan Merkel. If we can get something like a showdown of the Scald, we're right back in it. But if not, this could be game. I think we're about to see game here, my friend, because Jan Merkel needs to draw something amazing. David putting us all in suspense here. What is it? Okay, Ooh. it's a love struck beast. All right, so two more blockers. These these will match up quite nicely with the others on the side of the on the David side of the battlefield. Yep, Has he bought is, himself a turn here? That is definitely a draw that keeps you in this game. And now we'll we see, see an if attack. we want to draw. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's go. Let's boogie. There is a bone crusher giant though to leave him shields down entirely. If uh, he targets this 1-1, one, one, which is the only oh target my. he has, Stomp is going to take care of it, so no blockers right. left now. If we, we get a 1-1, one, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> the 1-1, one, one, the power of the 1-1 one, one compels you. There is no 1-1 one, one there, but things are looking super good here for David. He just needs to yes. keep the pressure on. Keep swinging in. Yeah, we're going to see an attack with Magda. That's going to get a treasure. Now we can play Azika's Chariot plus Bone Crusher Giant for maximum amount of pressure. And just like last turn, the pressure is all going to be on Jan Moritz Merkel to get Showdown, a Crow and War, something big like this to stay yeah. in the game. Let's see if David wants to go for the Bone Crusher as well. I think he will. Heck yeah, let's do it. Bone Crusher Giant on the battlefield. Maximum pressure applied. What is the draw? Oh, it's Edgewall Innkeeper. That is two blockers for this. We can count Lovestruck Beast as just the driver for Azika's Chariot. That can be blocked by Lovestruck Beast. Edgewell Innkeeper can block a 4-3. And to my count, these three two-power creatures are going to get through and put Jan Moritz Merkel at negative two. Doesn't even play it because you need to bluff something better. Yeah. He'd just be saying to David, yeah, cool, I'm dead. Swing in, yeah. do your worst. And at this point, David Inglis doesn't have to worry. He's just going to put everything that he can over the line and advance here in this 
Eliminator match. Unfortunately for Jan Merkel, he is going to go B send packing, but David Inglis winning in a very convincing 2 0. So congratulations to him. What a nail biter. Congratulations to David. He is officially one match win away from MPL.